Welcome. Welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. We try to make sense of this crazy Arizona real estate market. And as predicted, it's prediction season. Prediction season. Everybody comes out with their predictions for next year, and they are not disappointing. Not that the predictions are disappointing, but the level of predictions are not disappointing. There are many. Well, let's start out with this one here. <clears throat> Housing market collapse could push home prices down 20%. Major markets like Dallas, Los Angeles, experts predict. Experts, there's always devil in the details. So they're, they're going on here and saying this mortgage demand plummets to its lowest level in 25 years. Some experts believe the housing market decline will hit a cadre of regions especially hard, pushing prices down as much as 20% in pandemic era hot area hotspots. I think we're one of those. They call us the pandemic era hotspot. Um, so they go on to say, they give you a little data here, and, and uh, <clears throat> Redfin says sales prices have climbed 7% over the past year, and that's true, but they were up much higher, around 15. I'll show you those numbers in just a moment. The prices in San Francisco have ticked down 4%, while those in neighboring Oakland, California, and New Orleans have fallen a half a percent to 11%, respectfully. So it gets interesting now, and uh, where Goldman... Well, he also predicts a correction would be worse for pandemic area hotspots like Phoenix, Austin, and Las Vegas. We've seen that before. And, uh, you know, that we've had this influx of people in the past two years with uh, uh, people getting to work remotely. And I've got an article about that, too. It's one of my see, I told you so moments. It says here, Goldman notes that 9% of active listings have cut prices on Zillow, mainly in areas that saw a sharp run-up like us. And I'm going to show you the price cuts that we have here in this market, too. But here's an interesting thing I wanted to show you. Surprising fact. Goldman chief strategist Lofty Karui, I probably butchered that name, says national home prices will likely avoid a correction next year. But he expects 39% of metropolitan areas, metropolitan, what the hell's metropolitan? Metropolitan areas will experience price declines. But here's something to... Um, for sellers to consider here. It's important to remember that much of the housing market data being reported are based on home purchases that were agreed to a month or two ago when mortgage rates were a point and a half lower, says Redfin economist Taylor Marr. Sellers should anticipate that buyers are unwilling to pay a price similar to what the neighbor's home sold for a month ago. Now, there are some comments that I see in the, in the uh, comment section of some of my videos, and people go, sellers are just being greedy. Look, sellers put their home on the market. It's the buyers that determine what it's going to be sold for, and they determine that based on the home that they want, the size they want, and a payment that fits their budget. You can ask a million dollars for your home if you want, and you can be greedy, but it's not going to sell if the buyers are not willing to participate. House prices went up not because sellers got greedy and decided to mark home prices up. They went up because there was so much demand by buyers because of the easy access of low interest rates. That's what drove prices up. And that's what's going to drive prices down. As we've reached a point now where financing the home becomes way more expensive than it was a month ago or two months ago, <clears throat> prices will adjust because the seller that is has that asking price and is anticipating getting that asking price, is going to find out that nobody's even coming to look at the home. So again, the price of the home is driven by who? The buyers, not the sellers. You can ask whatever you want for your home, and you'll eventually get there when your price comes down. The buyers will dictate that for you. So I'll get off my soapbox here for a moment. Here's our price reductions here in the valley. Look at this. We are sitting there at 4115 that's pretty hefty. <clears throat> That's uh, quite the spike up. And we're seeing here, let me get my little handy dandy magnifying glass out, that <clears throat> resale closings were down 42% from September of last year. That's huge. And it said that new home closings <clears throat> down 4% from last year. So they're winning the battle out there. They're winning it because they're coming out with some creative financing. But what it did say, it says... Uh, that we are, let me, my magnifying glass is confusing here. 
We can see that resale homes are, or new sale homes are faring much better than sales with new record high median sales price up 1% from last year, last month. New homes now represent 22.3% of all closings. Resale closings are down dramatically the lowest monthly total since January 2016. The median sales price has fallen 8.4% from the peak in May. That's a, uh, a crucial number to remember. So <clears throat> you're going to hear that we're down 8%. We're down 8% from our peak. Nobody rings a bell when you're at the top. They don't ring a bell when you're at the bottom. But guess what? May was the top. And we are down 8% from that top, but we're still above 2021. So we're probably above 2021 by about 7%. So when you start seeing headlines, just, just remember that you're going to hear a couple of different numbers being floated out there. Now, I it looks like we are trending um, not, I don't want to say quickly, but we're trending towards 2021 pricing. And you can see it in this chart here. The monthly median sales price still hasn't hit the blue line of 2021. And we had a run up last year at the end of the year that continued in 2022. It went up at a pretty alarming rate. And now it's just coming down. So it won't be long. A couple weeks three weeks maybe we'll be down here well it's going to be more than that. let's I'll, I'll say six weeks we're going to be at 2021 20, pricing so that's uh um as you look ahead to 2023 th that's where you're going to start seeing these predictions that you get from goldman it says well you know yeah some markets are going to go down 20 to 30 percent but not everywhere um some of the hot markets might some won't all depends on how much new construction is going on uh, and where interest rates are. And nobody really knows where interest rates are. Even the bond market. I read an article here talking about the comparison to the price of oil in the 10-year treasury. And it, it's usually correlated. You know, you have oil prices going down and 10-year treasuries went, went down. But then oil prices went up or oil prices went down here and the 10-year treasury is still considered to go up. So they're saying, well, there's a correlation, maybe not. So now with OPEC clamping down again, people are asking, well, is this going to uh, raise rates again? Nobody knows. Everybody's everybody's guessing. Here's an interesting article here too. Over 50% of CEOs say they're considering cutting jobs over the next six months. Ouch. And remote workers may be the first to go. Now, when we first started getting into the remote worker phase of this there's a couple things that that i said being the old fart in the building and one is you know one i think you after a while start to in sales jobs lose some momentum and productivity because there are a lot of decisions that are made at the water cooler people standing next to each other and go you know i had an idea and that doesn't happen during a zoom call it does but not at the same level and guess what it's a lot easier now to lay you off if you're a remote worker Remember all of the Zoom calls where people, there was even a title company here in Arizona and Seattle that laid off 100 people on a Zoom call. You're just a number now. You're out there. Now, I remember I worked for a large corporation. We went through a major layoff a couple times. And I was the guy that had to deliver the layoffs. And our human resources department would put the severance packages in a blue folder. So you'd walk in with a blue folder and sit down. And people knew what that blue folder meant. But you had to have a conversation with them. You had to say, here's what we're offering you. It was more personal. Didn't make it any easier. But as managers, we had to be very careful that we didn't walk into the office with a blue folder that had different stuff in it. Because if you walked into a sales office with a blue folder, everybody froze. Like, oh, no. Oh, oh no, no, no. This is, uh, we have a new dental plan. <laughs> so human resources would send it in a blue folder We'd put it on a red one. <laughs> so now they're saying that uh, remote workers might be the first to go. And it did say down here, let me see if I can find it. Um, uh, it's likely and extremely likely remote workers will be laid out first, according to a majority of the 3,000 managers polled. Another 20% were undecided. And they were saying that uh, in this art article um, that it's probably much easier to lay off the people that aren't in the office. The ones that are in the office, you're talking to them every day, you're meeting with them, you're making decisions with them. So uh, beware of any upcoming Zoom calls if you're with a large organization. Now, going forward here in Phoenix, 
Uh, we are seeing price declines. We are in a highly interest rate sensitive market. So the predictions are going to be fast and furious going forward. Be sure and hit that subscribe button and the like button. I'll keep you up to date. Thanks.